the grind, man. That's yeah. how it goes. And but we played the same exact set. You know what I mean? Just rip it as hard as we can yeah. until something happens or we die. I mean, that's. I mean, it sounds melodramatic, but like we rip it as hard as we can. This is Jeff Garlock, and welcome to Worst Gig Ever on Revolver. This is the podcast where we talk to musicians about how terrible it is to be in a band. Uh, Terrible it is to be on tour. Terrible it is to be in a van. And today we have Christian and Donnie from the band Whores, and they have some great stories. Uh, Yeah, they break it down about how terrible it can be, borrowing amps, how terrible it can be, staying at people's houses, but also how awesome it is to be a grown-up. And this is the thing we're going to learn here. Grow up, people, because that's what this is all about. Uh, So uh, keep on listening. Again, they've got great stories, and we've got other great episodes uh, that if you haven't listened to, you should check them out. Uh, Check out our video version of it, and uh, keep your ears peeled for some future episodes. All right, let's talk to Christian and Donnie from Whores. Worst gig ever. You! So yeah, so usually I start with any type of worst gig on your end. It can be, usually it's a show, uh, but one whatever's the one that pops in your head is a starting point for a terrible show. I mean, we've played Casey, who plays bass, who's in the next room right now, <laughs> earlier today said we've played, like, I think he said 550,000 shows. Yep. I think that's the number he used. <laughs> so we've had a lot of, I mean, when you're starting out, you play... To no one for right. nothing forever. Right. That's yeah. just how it goes. But last year we were in, we did a European tour with Big Business. And um, a friend of mine from Atlanta, who I'm not going to name drop because he's sort of famous, um, let me borrow his amp because he has an amp that lives over there in, in Europe. Right. And we were talking and I'd say, we're going over there. And he's like, oh, what are you doing for backline? Yada, yada. I've got an amp that lives in London. We were flying into London. You can borrow it. Great. So I broke that amp a couple days in. And then we played a um, this festival in Berlin, and the guy who was the um, the festival runner also owned a backline company. He let me borrow an amp, like totally for free. Broke that one, and um, we were playing at Roadburn Festival, and this is during our set. The amp just died, mm-hmm. just stopped working, and there's a lot of people there. It's not a little sure. festival. Baroness was the headliner for that. It was like. It's a big deal for us to Many be there. Many people are very psyched to be playing. We were very one of those <laughs> yes. three of those people. <laughs> yes. It's awesome. So the amp breaks and like, you know, I don't want to say God bless Donnie <laughs> yeah. and Casey, but hell Satan, <laughs> Donnie and Casey, they kept playing, like just kept rolling through it and just kept just looping it right. as the guys who work there were like furiously trying to take the amp off and plug in a new one and turn it on and, and it, they got it working, they got it back on and we had this like triumphant victory after all these gear woes and they just they hooked it up and people went crazy it's like it's on YouTube I saw it it's really cool there's like eight minutes of just like like torturing people and people are like looking around like is this on purpose and it was it turned out to be killer but right. it could have been I mean because it's a good disaster, like the music dude. you guys play could it was early in our set like, yeah, too this is supposed to be the obnoxious <laughs> right. part well I mean a lot of noise rock stuff is totally informed by like, Kraut Rock which right. rep- repetition is yes. the name of the game man and you got Klaus Stinger going so it, right. let him so roll it could be fine it could be but you know it turned out great but the next day I went to a music store and bought an amp yeah. of my own did you? To, yeah <laughs> to have over there I was tired of it happening sure what'd you end up getting? Um, just like a little tiny bass head uh-huh. to use for guitar, right. but it's indestructible and it's like lunchbox sized. Right. And now it's like my backup one. And then I bring it to fly. We did a, um, a thing for amphetamine reptile this summer with Melvin's and mud honey. And I just brought that little head right. in my suitcase and done. I you mean, know, she's in the cabinet. It's awesome. That's I, in retrospect, I'm like, I lived in fear always of my Ampeg SVT. Like stuff breaks. Blue line, like oh, it's you know, it's a beautiful amp. Yeah, like, this is yes. what it is. It's an amp, a little baby ampeg that looks like an SVT, right. but it's a little baby solid state. It's two hundred and fifty watts though. Yeah, I was just <laughs> so loud. hooked on not 
doing that yeah. against all better judgment. My real amps are what are the ones I use are vin- ones vintage and ones right. reissue, but they're they break. You have to maintain yep. them, and you use them, and you play a couple hundred shows yep. a year. They yep. <laughs> they break. And you're in the middle of Tennessee. You have to find who's yes. the guy who can do it. Our in poor a quick tour turnaround. manager in Europe was <laughs> pulling his hair out. Trying we didn't we really have any hair, but. Right. Figuratively speaking, he was pulling his hair out, <laughs> trying to help us and trying to like get another amp and another amp and another amp and another amp. It was just ridiculous. Right. It worked out okay, but he was sort of tasked with handling that because we had never been there before. Sure. So. Was that your first time to Europe? Yeah. Okay. It was a yeah. big business. Yeah, big business. They were great. We shared a van with them and or Sprinter or whatever. And right. Mixed backline and like yeah, they really. It was great. Yeah, I mean that also speaks to like. Did you have that feeling of like, oh, right, this is what everyone's been talking about, like doing hundreds of shit gigs in America, oh. and then all of a sudden you get to Europe and you're like, oh, right, they'll treat you It nice, didn't seem, I mean, great. hospitality is a little better, yeah. or exists, let's put it that way. Right. Um, but I mean, okay. we've been playing, you know, a couple years now, like pretty right. solid in America, so we're getting to a point where it's decent here. Did you get stuck in any of the long sets in Europe? No. Where I mean, they... I played once, at least in Switzerland, where, like, there were two bands on the bill, but it was, like, a grindcore band. Mm. But they were like, no, 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 we play long sets here. So then it ended up being, like, a 40 minutes. Oh, like, like, we legitimately yeah. had to play every song we knew and then also stretch out a jam. Oh, like, just to fill in. And the entire time, there was just no clapping. <laughs> it was just staring at us with dead eyes. Just like four headliners. Yeah, yeah. basically. That sucks. Uh, and <laughs> it was so a good. Yeah, you need to clip it. Let's get the, you know, let's go. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, when you're in America, like, what are your, what are your favorite places to play? And then what, like, are there parts of the, the country you kind of dread cycling around? You want to take it? <laughs> oh, uh, just when we tour out maybe, like, Midwest, like, because right. the drives get... Mm-hmm. 10 hours a day you know stuff like that so it's <clears throat> it gets more spread out and it's that's what I dread sure it's the long stretches uh-huh. uh huh but uh, how do I mean, you mean seasonal I mean up yeah. north in the winter <laughs> mm. we did Canada in February with retox <laughs> oh you did yes yeah. <laughs> well, you for punishment how was it <laughs> tour was great but it was Canada in February yeah. man I mean what are you going to do did you have any sketchy driving we have, we have sketchy driving in every tour like, yes. we had like two days ago we were like the wind was like, trying to tip us over it was insane I was like I think we're going to die today yeah. it sucked <laughs> every tour but you just you know you push through you push through you be careful and right. don't do anything silly I mean, yeah. now I have, in retrospect, my wife having a lot of, like, I'm glad you didn't tell me stories. Right. Because, like, there's, like, always, like, like the other day I was, like, telling her about, like, yeah, once we were going, like, uh, from uh, Detroit down to Atlanta and we hit black ice. Oh, yeah. It came out of nowhere. The van did a 360 across four lanes of traffic. Oh, my God. We ended up backwards. Van almost flipped over. And then we all got out and took a leak. Yeah. Because I think legitimately all the piss got freaked <laughs> out of us. And we were all dead asleep. And all of a sudden, our singer just woke up when we oh hit the God. ice and was just like, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. And luckily we were. But, like, you know, there was a constant just, like, living yeah. in fear of that. Dude, Cliff Burton, rest in peace. Right. We all know that story. <laughs> right. It's stressful. Uh, I mean, how do you, I mean, one, how do you push through, how do you push through mentally the long drives and also the stress oh. of that? I think it's different for everyone. How do you do yeah, it? I think it's just getting to the stage uh-huh. and doing what you want to do. So you you got to do that one thing and just stay on that focus, right? To get that done. Yeah. And yeah. do you just sit in the van, just slightly staring out the window, thinking? Pretty much. Stage, yeah. stage, yeah, stage, yeah. stage. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Uh, a lot of times it's just blank up there. Right. There's nothing going on. <laughs> sure. Until we get to the stage, but uh, yeah. Well, because yeah, you do find like a weird dead zone in your brain like it's just like it's not real living right. most of those hours yeah. it's like if you if I was being with any one of my friends at home they would just be looking at me like I was a crazy person yeah. but it makes total sense it's not for everyone no yeah how it's, do you get it's a special that? line uh, yeah you retreat right you go in yeah inside your brain right yeah and like I listen to music listen to podcasts and stuff mm-hmm. and um, you know it's I think it's different for everybody but I, I very I enjoy sleeping <laughs> Do you have a, a, gr- a great spot? deal, yeah, dude. Donnie built like a, a little box thing in the back of our van uh-huh. that we put like a 
bed thing on top of. It's like a bird's nest. It's awesome. <laughs> you go back there and set up the DVD player and it lights out. Man. See, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> it's always awesome. in theory, I would want that. But I would get so stressed about the flipping. You can't do anything about it. You just I, have to accept it. You just got to let go, man. I think that was the problem. It's going to happen. Let go. It's going to happen. <laughs> like, my singer would just uh, lay on top of the amps. We didn't have a loft. He would yeah. just take off his suit jacket. Make a pillow, yeah, and then just like find a way to get comfortably amidst all of the four twelves, yeah. yeah. Uh, but do you claim the bird's nest? No, I mean, you know, I, I don't even know that Casey's ever been in it. But Donnie and I both go in it, not together, right? But uh, yeah, <laughs> but I have a picture of Donnie. He built like this little fortress where he like walled off all the windows with blankets and uh-huh. has a little like portable DVD player was like strapped to the ceiling with his headphones on it was like a little fort it was great I was like this is amazing if I stay in the van overnight I'd do it up yeah sure all out. yeah I mean you gotta live it man. all like camper <laughs> situation in there. right you have to lie to yourself that's you have a to close situation. out the whole world yeah exactly how nice. often do you end up sleeping in the van not, weather, not very often weather yeah. dependent if the weather's nice right it, you know well Less weather, but like if if it's like three in the morning, mm-hmm. I don't feel like doing anything else. I right. just want to lay. I don't want to move. I right. want to go get stuff. I just want to go to sleep. Right. So. When you're out, now, I mean, it, it. You know, there's the kind of morphing as you end up. What the heck is that? The, yeah, there's the morphing as you know you kind of get you know you get more popular and you have less options for it. But like, what are your general? What are your sleeping conditions on tour most of the time? We like, usually get a hotel the, now. Do you do the hotel? Yeah, now? I mean, we have friends in certain cities. We have friends in every city, but mm-hmm. we have friends in certain cities that we know are like clean, quiet, well-adjusted adults who have right. a normal place where they live, and they treat us like guests. Yes. And it's great. We have a friend in Austin who literally has an Airbnb behind his house. Right. And he and his wife and now baby uh, have put us up, I don't know, four times, five times. Like, <laughs> right. they're great. They're super nice. So sometimes we'll do that. If we know it's like a rad situation, we don't really do the thing like, let's just go to the show and be like, can we crash on your ca-? I mean, because we're all adults. We're grown yeah. men. We're not teenagers. So that we've already done that. Yeah. Stage, and I'm not saying that we're some big whatever. I'm just saying in our trajectory of our lives, it's we don't want to do that, do so that. we don't do yeah. that. You know what I mean? That's so, the thing that breaks you. Yeah, yeah it is. And we are trying to think. We've talked about this specifically. Trying to think in terms of long game. Like we don't let's enjoy this while we're doing it. Let's right. not like you know scrimp and save and go like oh let's not get a hotel so we can save seventy dollars. Like let's have a clean, quiet. Yeah place and take a shower and feel like a normal human for a couple hours and then that's gonna you know make it easier than it would be otherwise I mean you can anybody can do it for a couple tours can you do it for 10 years right. can you do it for 30 tours right like make it it's enjoyable you know it wears you out it so wears you much. out when the conditions are great yeah so if they're not great right. who wants to do that man right. how do you convince someone to keep pressing right when it's a nightmare right like no one it's wants cool. to do Couches that. Couches are great, man. Don't it's worry fine. about it. But, you know, like, yeah, people are like, oh, dude, come play this place. We can get you, like, $100 and pizza for everybody. <laughs> yeah. You're like, eat a dick. It's, it's not happening. Yeah, I think you might now have different life priorities than yeah, I do at this not point. Not happening, bro. Do you have any memories of, like, some terrible ones from back in the day of, like, terrible places you stayed? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kansas City. Yeah. Um <laughs> Oh, it was so bad. It was one of those situations where it's like, yeah, this dude's cool. You can crash at his house. And we go over there, and there's, like, tumbleweed-sized fur balls of cat hair. And, like, he's all high and, like, yeah. just wants to talk. And, like, I literally put on my headphones and, like, a sleep mask, like, cover my face. Right. Like, go away. And he's still just, like, getting high and talking about records. And it was just super creepy and just... When I say getting high, I'm not saying smoking weed. Sure. I, I, whatever. That's the most innocuous thing yes. ever. But, like, it was a messed up situation. You see a fair it was amount so of cold, pipes though, and needles. You know? like, yeah, it was just get gross. Into the, this guy's cool situation. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, but that was years ago. That was easily five years ago. Right. So, not lately. We haven't had any real sketchy situations like that. When it was those days, like, who... Did you have someone who was designated to hunt down? No, not really. No, it was. I mean, there wasn't as much planning back then. It was sort of like get in the van, 
We'll figure it out. I mean, more like legitimately at the show. Like our singer was we. Oh I no! Relied on no, I, on the mic would say like, "Hey, charming. we need to place this thing." You know, I didn't mean to talk over you there. Right? Yeah, no. Just we'd raise the flag and say like, "Hey," <laughs> you know, it sucked. I don't do that anymore. Do you have any memories of terrible? I can't think of any. Uh, I can deal with a lot though. Uh, that's just, true. I'm just passing through. Right. <laughs> Do you engage with the people when you say? Because that was always my problem. It's like you know, people want to hang out. They want to hang. And we don't. We want to party. Sleep. But you it's have Saturday, even if it's Tuesday yeah. for them. And you yeah. got six more weeks. Every day Saturday. Yes. Yeah. So true. right. But you and also like have that. Like I would have that constant battle. Where it's like I have to be nice. Sure, and you I want to be to polite, like, right? Yeah. Of course, but I also really don't want to talk to anyone, and I just want to like sleep yeah. in the bathtub if that means I can just not talk at all. Sure. Uh, I mean, how do you even that? Like, how do you mentally push through? Well, that's when you just say you got to go get a pillow from the van and you never come back. Tricks <laughs> <laughs> of the trade. <laughs> yeah, you just have to find an escape route. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, we're staying on a pig farm. Mm. I guess I got to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> Dwight Schrute's beet farm. <laughs> right. Oh, we so did good. stay on a pig farm once. I think about it all the time. <laughs> in Houston, gross. there was just some kid Clay, and he was very nice, but he lived right above a pig farm. That's pretty loud. <laughs> Yeah, what do you uh, do? But uh, uh, and it was and it was us in another band, and we were all in this one little shack, and we were like touching each other the whole night, no air conditioning, mm. <laughs> subtling. I think squealing. we're gonna die this way. Yeah, that's how horror movies like, start. It felt like Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> like yeah. it just felt like you could hear that squealing all night. Why don't you make like, me hurt your dog? <laughs> right. Yeah. It was a fucking nightmare. Oh, that sucks. Uh, I you you just got off, uh, or you're just getting off tour with. Darkest hour. Yeah, uh, last Pittsburgh last night was the last night of that tour. And that tour, how was how was that tour? That was great. They're super nice. We yeah. really had fun. Yeah, the the Mike Pittsburgh Schleibel, show the was guy. yeah the Pittsburgh show in particular was great. Mm-hmm. And Chicago was great, but Chicago is always great for us. Um, right. But yeah, we had a good one last night. Definitely, people were throwing down. It was really fun. And then, you know, like we were discussing before we started doing this, um, we were just gonna head back to Atlanta from Pittsburgh, and we were just gonna try to book something between the two that made a little more sense geographically but then our agent suggested that we play here in St. Vitus and it, right. it makes we, it's our I mean St. Vitus has been good to us since the band started mm-hmm. like they we've been playing there literally for five years solid to yeah. like selling it out like yeah. doing well there and that's not because we're great it's because they hustle and right. they're it's great dudes and you. it's a great spot and they're just it's our home away from home for yeah. sure there's a couple places like that um, around the country that just feel comfortable Right. And that's certainly one of them. I mean, I have David Castillo, who books there, like he and I have discussed this. If we get to the stage where we're big enough to sell out, like, Music Hall at Williamsburg or something like that, mm-hmm. a place that's bigger, we just want to do multiple nights at St. Vitus instead. Yeah. Because it's, they're our homies. Yeah. And they take care of us. And they, they have since yeah. long before anyone else did. I mean, so. that's also somewhat the ideal. If you can call the shots, quote unquote, but, like, like if you get forced into like doing a venue you don't really want to do it happens all the time yeah every like tour that is happening anyways all the time. so if you can control as much as you can yeah to be able to play like the good places makes sense because uh, uh, yeah like there are so many I mean what makes for a bad venue to you at this point for a crap show um small stages are hard mm-hmm. because we're pretty animated or try, like to be right but with a small stage I start knocking stuff over I will routinely knock the the mic for the bass drum right. I'll just hit it with my calf or whatever Right. I did it like not last night but two nights ago I do it all the time <laughs> yeah. and I try not to you but, just have a trajectory but for if it. it's that small like what yeah. are you going to do man so yeah. small stages are rough um, honestly if people if the people who run the place are nice and welcoming and they want us there right. the other conditions really don't matter that much right. it's really more about people yeah. You know, and if they're stoked for us to be there, then we're stoked to be there, right? Know? And if they're not stoked to be there, I don't. We don't care either. We're still gonna like rip it as hard as we can. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But you know, it's nice when you're welcomed, right? Yeah. You know? uh, do you have any problems? Well, for me, if it would be if there's only one bass drum mic, yeah, and one vocal mic, yeah. And a single light bulb. Yeah, I mean, because everything <laughs> We've else. We've done it, dude, a lot. Everything right. else is so loud. Yeah. Uh, in this band, uh, there's no point in me even being there. Right. Because you're not going to hear it. Yeah. So th- that would make a bad venue for me. Do you ever have problems at 
venues with sound guys and they're like, oh, you guys are too loud. Of course. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Not stop, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Like, but my old band like, Panthers <clears throat> wasn't heavy. Like, I mean, we were heavy, but we weren't that loud. And it was a constant where I was just like, what are other bands doing? Yeah, we always like, wonder when we go there. Are they all playing combos? Right. Like, and we go like, hey, where do we put our... Uh, people call empty cases dead cases right. or just deads for short. Yeah. So we say, hey, where, where do we put our deads? And then they immediately start looking around like, um, like... Like, I guarantee you this yes. is not the first show this place has ever had. <laughs> what have you done in the past? Every single time. Um, so that, Just shock that every question time, dude. Up. So the loudness thing all the time. But last night, the guy who did sound um, came up to me and afterwards. And I don't even... I've learned how to sort of cheat it and like not give them 100% right. when yeah. we're sound checking. Um, and I don't adjust knobs or anything. There's just a lot of complicated nonsense on the pedal board and stuff. So it's not nonsense, but whatever. It's complicated. Um right. So I don't give them 100%. And then they're still like, oh, it's way too loud. I'm like, they have no idea. Yeah. That's like that's like 60% of where it's yeah. going. I mean, I but I've learned to do it. that. But yeah. the guy last night came up and said, hey, you know, God, that was so loud and whatever. And so people, I mean, I know it is. But like he said, but it was, there was a clarity to it, which is not an accident. Man. Right. <laughs> you know, like, you, you know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So it was cool that he recognized that, that it isn't just about volume. Right. It's volume is sort of like how popcorn is a delivery vehicle for salt or right. like Parmesan cheese. It's a similar sort of. Well, that's the other part. Sometimes it's just like you, you have to be aware that that is like part of the concept. It absolutely like, is. Like, like we're loud for a reason. Like you're loud for a specific reason. Sure. Like, you know, and like it's not only to get to a certain tonal range, but also like, it's, yeah, it's like you said, so like it actually it affects works people better to have it cut through. And yeah, and it like, it, it and the lowness, I just, again, I'm just, was always fat. Like, I'm just like, what are every other band doing? Like this can't be that yeah. we are coming right. in like the boredoms. Like, right. Back it's not some new thing. Right. <laughs> right. I don't get it. Like, I remember playing whoa, in... Whoa, 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 <laughs> right. yeah. Okay. I do remember... I always think on the other end, we played in Toronto once on a High on Fire tour, and, like, this guy had the brown note going. Yeah. Like, he was working where it was just this bass tone that was making me want to vomit yeah. the entire time. It's a sonic terror. Yeah, and then he awesome. was just like... Yeah, and he was just like, oh, man, it's a little, a little too loud. Yeah. Bring that. I was like, I don't tell you. Like, why are we fighting here? Yeah, this is the same. we're working on the same show. Let's work right. together. I mean, honestly, not to sound snobby, but they're there to reinforce what you're doing, not to right. alter it. Right. D- take what we're doing and leave it alone or enhance it. Those right. are your two options. Don't try to tell us to do this and do that because it's not just, a talent show. We're not kids, so room, knock it off, man. man. Exactly. <laughs> In this room? Oh, really? <laughs> What's particular about this room? <laughs> Thomas Dolby. Right. That's Give me a break, like, man. It's not like, oh, well, the walls are made of pure marble. <laughs> right, right. Like, and it's also an airplane hanger. Right. It's like, yeah, then I'll listen to you. But, like, I've been it's in just a, a bar, bar, dude. Yeah. It's a bar. There's a bunch of people back we there. You just have to get a little bit louder. Yeah, it's uh, fine. Uh, uh, thinking of the Darkest Hour tour, like, you know, do you, do you ever feel... Uh, because they live somewhat in the same world as you, but not really. Yeah, we, like, a lot, we tour with a lot of bands like that. Right. And how do you do you feel comfortable with that at this point? Do you not oh, yeah. care? Is it just like whatever? Well, we want to like the music of the right. band first. And then sure. we, if we haven't met them, we don't know them socially. We hope that they're nice people. Right. But I mean, you know, generally when we book our own tours and we're headliners, we have people who we know mm-hmm. as openers, you know, or as support, whatever you want to call it. Um, but when we're support generally we don't know the people like we didn't know Cult of Luna right. before we toured with them but like I got hurt on that tour and had to have some surgery and like a friend of mine started a GoFundMe thing which I'm sort of fundamentally against but <laughs> he did it and I was very happy that he did it because I was you know anyway the point is Cult of Luna like multiple people from that band threw a bunch of money at it right. like and then we didn't know them before that tour yeah. and it wasn't because they felt liable in some way they're sure. just nice people yeah. <laughs> you know so we hope they're nice people, but it, we have to like their band. Sure, it's not. We've had offers for some pretty corny stuff that are like bands that are pretty big, but just like we don't want to go out with them if it's if it's like not something that we'd be down with. Right. Then no sale. I don't really care how big it is. Right. You know? Do you feel like the audience? Is it, does it feel like a more of an uphill battle at all, or do you? Does it just like you just push through and you just like I'm doing my job? <laughs> there are different audiences. Yeah. But we do the same thing no matter what. Right. We do what we do. Right. You know? Yeah. And if they like it, great. If they don't, we're still doing what we do. Right. Like, it's not changing. Which is the best. Because it's just like, there you have those tours sometimes where you're like, oh, how are we not, he- we're somehow either not heavy enough for you or we're too heavy. Right. And it's just this weird battle. Like, do, does that make you end up like, 
if you see dead eyes staring at you, <laughs> does that push you even harder? Statues. Yeah. Yeah. Tombstones. Yeah. yeah. We get that sometimes. Do you end up just being like, all right, I guess I'll <laughs> just kind of. I antagonize them. Yeah. I get in their face. And like, I do. <laughs> and like, if I'm already sweating, we'll start headbanging right in their face and just getting sweat all over them. I'm like, move. Right. Move. Right. Or go to the back. Why are you standing in front, man? Which you is know, crazy. I would seriously like, antagonize most them. Bored no problem people doing that. Love to stand up front. It's weird. And I'm always like, when there's a beer run in between every band, it's going to clear out. Yeah. Like, you can get that spot back. I don't know. Do you just end up well, playing yeah. <laughs> Well, you pick one out. Right. Yeah. And you just dead stare back. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> just robot everything <laughs> until right. they feel awkward and then they move and then you pick another one. Right. You know, you get through the show. Do you, have you ever had one have you ever had a show where you've not given it your all like get, had shows where you look back I think often I had at least one show that I was like I'm bummed at, yeah like I had one that I broke Never. it was a middle of a yeah, tour I can't I can't I don't think so there was one right for me I <coughs> probably brought up in the podcast for it was right after South by and it was like we I think maybe we went down with like TV on the radio or something so it was like oh all good shows Sure. And then you play South by, and then you know you book Denton after. Oh no, we've had that. Yeah, but we didn't play any differently. We I did. think I just yeah. mentally was right. just like I couldn't. There was the one time I can picture. I just was like dead. I did the dead stare, but myself, yeah, well, I was a tombstone. Uh, yeah. Maybe sometimes if like I'm exhausted right. and I have nothing left, yeah. You know, I'll try my best to get through it, and I'm not giving it my all. Well, it's not a choice, but not like right. purposely, because. If they come to the show, they deserve to get the show. Sure. So, I mean, even if they just stand there, they're going to tell somebody, wow, they blew my mind. You right. Know, so. Sound guy was wearing a Dr. Seuss hat. It really, oh, I think that's no. the thing. It was the straw that broke my camel's It's like that, the bass player in that band, Complete. <laughs> <laughs> he has a Dr. Seuss hat. <laughs> um, we had, okay, so we did Heavy Montreal a couple of years ago, uh-huh. which was great. It was Metallica. Yeah. That's, you know, I mean, it's crazy. It was huge. 80,000 people. The day before that, we played, and I've told the story a couple times, but it's brief. Um, we played a, a club show in Boston, in the Middle East. It was normal, good club show, good turnout. Upstairs, good support. Downstairs. Um, upstairs. Yep. And then the next night, we went to Heavy Montreal, 80,000 people. Mm-hmm. Insane. There's, uh, the catering was like, it was insane. There was a masseuse. Yep. Multiple masseuse is. <laughs> I'm not really sure what <laughs> the plural of masseuse is. <laughs> anyway, next night, Providence, Rhode Island, eight paid. Yeah. 80,000 to eight in 24 hours. Yeah. It's the grind, man. That's yeah. how it goes. And but we played the same exact set. You know what I mean? It's like a wild up and down. Just man. rip it as hard as we can <laughs> yeah. until something happens or we die. Yeah. I mean that's. I mean it sounds melodramatic, but like we rip it as hard as we can every time. It's hard when you book when you book the kind of off dates. Yeah, like you have it's to. gonna happen. Yeah. Of like course. if you're book if you're on tour with High and Fire, like I mentioned before, like yeah, we, then we booked in a fish restaurant. Yeah. To playing to B- village eight, water, eight. like Hedwig and the Angry Inch, <laughs> and like playing behind the salad bar, yeah, sneeze guard, exactly. That's how it goes, man. Uh, and then at those, but you're just kind of, it is what it is, like it's, yeah. And I think that ends up being a lot of tour, like for like the bad stuff. Like I think that's how I got through. It was just like thinking, like, it is what it is. Like this yeah. is like I can't do anything about it. Yeah, I mean, you learn. You know, you take it. You try to spin it positively. All right, try, try to in my brain. I say, okay. Lesson learned. Right. Don't play here again. Right. Next time, go around it. Don't book a different venue, different promoter, different town. Right. Whatever. Just don't don't repeat your mistakes. You know? Yeah. Hundred uh, percent. What? How do you? Because you know, being in a band, the other part a lot of people don't think about is the kind of interpersonal of the van, like and like dealing with each other. Yeah. Like in the van, like do you end up? Do you have kind of van rules? Uh, not spoken to, to rules. Unspoken to like get everyone to chill out. Not really. I mean, we we never really have big blowout arguments mm-hmm. or anything. But I think <clears> also that's a a function of us all being adults, and right. we sort of you can sort of sense when somebody's maybe having a bad day or not right. feeling great or is upset about something to having to do with the band or something personal, and you just give them a little space. Right. And you know, we're all grown ups, and then a couple of days later, everything's fine. You know, right. but we also do address stuff if something comes up that's like, "Hey, let's not pretend this isn't happening. Let's talk mm-hmm. about it, and then it's over, so we don't build up some kind of, you know, um, what's it called, like a resentment, sure. you know, in the future. And then you're like, "Get your dang suitcase!" You know, you're right. yelling about something that doesn't Sweatshirt. matter. Sweatshirt, always. Yeah, exactly. We but will. It's like, deal with if you deal with the big stuff, all the small stuff is fine, right? And, and you don't, it doesn't build up, you know. I mean, I think that also speaks to a big thing that you kind of just brought up there is that like most 
most bands, and like I think of like when I was like hardcore touring, like I wasn't old enough to be on tour. Yeah. Like I probably should. No one should be. I was a piece like, of work in yeah. my twenties, dude. Piece of work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's over. Right. I am. That's, that's the thing. Like as a person, yeah. I'm sure you feel like I enjoy being a grown up. It's awesome. I enjoy be, it's the best thing in the world. Because you don't have to pretend you don't care. You just don't care. Right. You literally don't care. Right. It's not an act. Like it was like you know the band was my band was five people all with their own mental issues who yeah, hadn't done sucks. any work on themselves yeah like and you but and also no one it, it would be such a dream I think for most bands to see what it would be like to be a grown up on <laughs> like anytime <laughs> now I go into I'm just like oh man what a bunch of weird wasted years to some extent <laughs> just because yeah you just can't put it together to be like you know what I should actually say I'm upset at you right like, this or cool. let it go yeah you most know, of the time depending on the situation like right. figure it out what's like, the best way to deal with this like I would get into big blowouts like I remember my, my guitarist was hooked on playing third eye blind I thought you were going to say heroin no no no, no. <laughs> he said he, third eye blind that's later which down weirdly line. is the worse bigger problem. <laughs> but that was the thing is like at that point it might as well have been heroin holy shit because we were in the middle of <laughs> an eight hour blind, drive dude. and all of a sudden you're throwing it third eye blind he wasn't kidding you're serious it. about this Yeah, he, he was, wasn't didn't like them in a jokey way he, this was the argument. Did he defend? He defended them. This is the two-hour, oh, I think, argument smokes. we had, where I was just like, I can't deal with this. Indefensible. And he's like, I'm not listening ironically. Like, this right. is good songwriting. And then it was a whole back and forth. I have a friend who defends Juggalos. Yeah, same thing. He's like, no, man, the business model. I'm like, we're not talking about the business model, dude. Right. We're talking about these slack jawed <laughs> right. yokels. You okay? can appreciate the business model and still acknowledge, like, no, don't. No sale. Yeah. Uh, but that's the thing. Like, it's like there are so many of those battles where, like, I look back and I'm like, I think I was the crazy one. Just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I should just have let it go. We have super diverse tastes. All three right. of us are very different musical tastes. But... <laughs> you know, in over the period of the last couple of years, I think we've all learned to just kind of like, maybe don't say everything that you think. <laughs> maybe just go like, just let it go. And right. Let everybody be themselves. Right. And then it'll be fine. You yeah. Know? Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, uh, I was thinking about, this has probably come up, uh, and it's related to the music you guys play. So like, I think partly because it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately, especially in relation to death metal lyrics. Like, so you're mentioning, you know, obviously, like, you're a noise rock band. You're coming from, like, this kind of pedigree of, like, all these kind of sure. older bands. Like, you know, bands that existed before. It goes along with this music as you're also, like, as I'm getting older, I'm like, oh, I have to find ways to sometimes defend certain things that, like, I put out mm -hmm. or bands I listen to. And I think part of it is, like, do you look at the, the world of kind of, like, older noise rock and just... I think I, my main thought was, I was thinking about, I was like, oh, horrors, I love this band. They're amazing live. And I was thinking about once when I wanted, uh, I finally got a copy of Shorty's Thumb Days. Oh, it's a great record. Amazing record. Did you record. get it on vinyl? No. Oh, my okay. buddy in the Red Scare had a copy. Cool. Like, this was years ago. And he was like, oh, yeah, you love yeah, Fresh Copey Breath, here's Shorty. I remember you guys getting made it. And it's all this, like, I yeah, yeah, it was singing, so good. It's so crazy. I mean, I really love Shorty. It's a great band. And I remember putting it in my computer and it's been like, oh, the second song is called N Word Hat. I know. What a bummer. It's a different time. Yeah, and like, and, and do you, looking back on that, do you, do you have, because I have that a lot with death metal too. Like, where I'm just yeah. like, man, I love this stuff and it's people so misogynistic. Have just, I think people have just, I don't want to evolve is too strong a word, but mm -hmm. I think people have become more sensitive and self aware. And that's, a good thing, right. you know? I mean, if you're just speaking in generalities, that's right. got to be a good thing for people to be more aware of the people around them. I mean, that's generally in that Blast from the Past movie that Dave Foley talks about, like, the definition, the, like, succinct definition of a lady or a gentleman is someone who makes everyone around them as comfortable as possible. Right. And that's just, like, really simple grade school stuff. But right. So I think it's good yeah. that that's what's going on. I mean, I think there's a problem, of course, with our name being the elephant in the room. Where people sort of misinterpret what mm -hmm. our band is about or what kind of people we are, and they think X, Y, and Z about us, and they're wrong. Right. I mean, and that is because the world we're living in, which is a, a great thing on paper, but I think people a lot of times will use their identity politics as um, a way to show the world how enlightened they are. Mm -hmm. And it's really not about the thing, it's about them right. showing everyone how sensitive and enlightened they are. And it's like, you can just be that. And not talk about it, right. and not like chastise other people about it. 
it's like anything like uh, that people joke about, like veganism or CrossFit mm-hmm. or whatever. It's like you can just do CrossFit and not talk about it. Right. You don't have to like wave the flag right. all the time. So it's a tricky time. And I, there is stuff like that. Like some of the old first wave of noise rock stuff has like they were definitely doing stuff that was provocative on purpose, sure. which I still appreciate because I'm an adult. But somebody who's 17 will be like, whoa. Why are they saying that? Right. Because they, they don't they didn't they weren't alive in 1988. Because well, I think I know? they don't know a lot about like as a comedian like I'm surrounded by like more like normal like, sure. people. I always think about that and I'm like, how do I explain this? That like I've got to research if a black metal band is national socialist. Oh, that's on the news from right now. The middle, and then like yeah. and then like how do I explain this shorty work and be like, well, you got to understand it was 1991, right? And like my black you don't ass, want to look like your makes sense in the context of what LP is doing. And even though you can't even do that, though, right. you can't defend it because then you, you're looked at as an apologist. Right. I mean, I feel in the same way. Like, as and I understand that argument. Yeah, they're wrong, but I understand right. the argument. You know, it's a hard thing when, especially when I'm like, oh yeah, like I also like explain my feelings on genre filmmaking and sure. why, like, I didn't expect these '70s Italian directors it's, to have great politics. Everything is politicized now. That's right. the, that's the issue. It's like. If you wear Nikes, you're a jerk because children in a factory built right. them. And it's ev- literally everything is political. Right. It didn't need to be that way. It was just art. Yeah. It was just art. Right. You know? And it was, there wasn't a political component to it unless you wanted to apply one to right. it. Right. But the shirt you're wearing, was mm-hmm. it made here? Right. Is it a USA shirt? Probably like, not. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, right. it's everything is like that now. And I think we're just, it's growing pains. And I think right. in another, you know, two, three generations, it'll smooth out and we'll be in a better place. But it's just, right now, it's hard. I think weirdly on one of the recent Portlandia episodes, Rollins. Had the line. That I was just like, met him. That line when he, oh, you did? I did. Like, How was um, it? It was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I went and saw him speak with my girlfriend in uh-huh. Atlanta. <laughs> she got us tickets for, it was my Christmas present, actually. Right. And then we got to meet him and everything. It was great. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it was so cool. Yeah. Childhood hero, man. I'm sure. Yeah. But that was it. He just has one line that's like, that's, uh, uh, he's just driving. And then when they're in the punk band, he goes, when I was young, I hated everything. Now I'm older, I like some things. <laughs> and I was like, pretty good summary of fucking getting Oh, older. man. There's uh, a uh, great, um, Oh, it's Adam Sandler in that movie, um, Funny People. Yeah. In my twenties, I like hated my parents. I was like, man, fuck my parents. My parents are assholes. In my thirties, like, man, fuck the president. That guy's a jerk. I hate that guy. In my forties, I'm like, I'm hungry. You know, I mean, what's in the so fridge? Nice. You know, man, I can't <laughs> battle all the time anymore. So good. Because at the end of the day, I still want to listen to Shorty. And then yeah, I'll just of be like, course. I don't know. Man. Maybe I just want to look at the song titles. <laughs> I just know that it exists. It's it, it exists unto itself, and I don't yeah. look at it in the context of the you know of of popular culture and where and and where we're at, um, you know, politically and socially right now because that's not where it exists. Yeah, you know, right. Agreed. It's fine. Uh, so to wrap up our last question. Shorty is great, by is. the way. Shorty is what? <laughs> great. They're the best. Great band. It re- Fresh Breath is like, yeah. that was a mind blower. I have the Hot for Teacher 7 inch still. Oh, man. It's so badass. Like, I liked US <laughs> Maple, but Shorty, I just like riffs. Better. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, US, US Maple's Maple a little more weird on purpose. Sometimes. Uh, dude, but I have that was all the great stuff. part of them, is how exhausting it was. You put it on, it'll clear a room, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's just like, That's not an accident. No. <laughs> That's great. It's so smart and annoying. Uh, but uh, so the the final question that always we ask: What do you think of the word "gig"? <laughs> you want to take that one? Gig? Yeah. Uh, Pass on that one. I don't, <laughs> I don't really think of it uh, as, a, as like in the world of like acts. Like bring your axe and play some licks at the gig. Is that what you're? Is that what you're going <laughs> with this? You, however you hear, so I hear it. Gig. People say gig. We just that? we call it show. A show. Yeah, yeah. You know. That was always, that's always it's. Any time I've asked this, it depends on. It sounds where like something the your mom would from. say. It, well, I love my mom. But 100%. Like, I guess it, yeah, it's like some, something that somebody outside the circle says. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nailed it. Any guess who comes from more of a punk role? It's like, yeah, we call it a show. Yeah. And then I can, it's pretty decided. Sometimes we'll be like, oh, love gigs. <laughs> <laughs> like, you love guitar setters. My well, girlfriend calls them concerts. Hear, like, uh, <laughs> she does. Last, time, uh, last night, uh, somebody said, uh, gig pig, or, yeah, gig pigs. Gig Which, pigs? Yeah, uh, is what Australians call America, you're a road dog if you're on tour oh, all the time. Oh, <laughs> gig pigs. Australia, Australia, they call them gig pigs. I like that better than But they say Akadaka yeah. instead of ACDC. So. Uh, but my two favorite bands ever, ACDC and Birthday Party, are both from Australia. So and they were gig respect, pigs. Yeah. Respect to respect Australia, to man. <laughs> respect to the gig pigs <laughs> and, and Oz, yeah. for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.